So just a couple of weeks ago, I got a new PC, started again from scratch, and I have made a substantial upgrade. However, this meant that I needed to reinstall my WoW. Now, for the most part, this is a fairly painless process, apart from the fact that I needed to reset up my UI. And in the process of copying all of the details of my UI over from my old system onto my new system, I realized that it was not going to be as simple and easy as I thought because I was going to be changing resolution of my standard WoW footage from 1080p to 1440 and this meant that I was going to have to adjust my UI accordingly. So while I was at it I decided that I have made a video on my UIs in the past but they have been based off of retail so I thought I'd quickly run through all of the UI based things that I have in my WoW Classic experience. Now, I am going to be talking a lot about add-ons, but I am only going to be talking specifically about the ones that affect my UI and not any that are otherwise related. So do bear that in mind if you're looking for advice on add-ons that do not strictly pertain to the UI. But that's enough of an intro, let's dive into it. Now I should mention as well that due to the reasons that I have already mentioned that this UI that I am showing you is a work in progress still, so there are some things about it that are still not quite as I would like, but I am going to talk about a few little tips and tricks at the end with regards to UIs that will help explain as to why the things have not been changed and why they may get changed in the future and why you may want them to be a little bit different for yourself than how I would have them. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about that comes up quite often in the comment section is actually my bag. Now, my bag add-on, I am going to include in this. No, it's not strictly the UI as such, but it is the UI when you open that particular menu. So, it's also the easiest thing to talk about, and that is that I use an add-on called Addy Bags. Now, Addy Bags is basically what gives this arrangement and look to a single uniform bag that you see in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen when my inventory is open. It is responsible for absolutely everything with regards to that bag that you see without any configuration whatsoever from myself. It is simply as it comes out of the box. I will put a link to all of the add-ons that I mentioned with the exception of LVY down in the description below, simply because that cannot be downloaded through Twitch, so you will have to go about getting that directly off of their website. When it comes to Addy Bags, however, the only sort of adaptation that I have is I have a second add-on that works with it in the form of the Addy Bags LVY skin which simply just changes its appearance to match the rest of the LVI that makes up the majority of my UI. Next up, I suppose since we've already mentioned it a few times at this point, we should probably talk about LVI. Now LVI is sort of my base that I operate from, that I orientate the rest of my UI around. It handles the vast majority of things that you see on the screen. So LVI is responsible for my loot window, my chat window, the bar at the bottom with all of the statistics on such as the time and FPS and my durability and things of that nature. It handles all of my action bars, it handles my party frames, my character frame, target frame, my map and also the quests that you see on the right hand side as well. Now LVI is a fantastic all-in-one UI add-on but its only real limitation, besides the fact that it is quite a memory hog, so you do need to have enough available memory to use it, is that the configuration does need to be done by each individual person who wishes to use LVI. Now this is sort of a blessing and a curse, because the reason this is the case is that LVI is massively configurable, so if there is something that you do not like, let's say about my UI, and you wanted to copy it but make some slight tweaks, you would be able to do so. For example, I hear a lot of people often remark upon my action bars at the bottom and how I have a sort of three tier uh, step effect going on with my action bars from left to right and a lot of people don't like that. But with LVI you could easily configure the distances between all of these bars, how many bars you had and how many buttons were on each bar, whether they are in a block and so on and so forth. And as a result, you are simply just going to have to have a fiddle around. If you do decide to get LVI, it does come with an install on it. So you simply follow the install wizard and from there it will give you sort of what LVI standardized base thinkings are on what role you're playing and a few little things that are personal preference it will ask you during the setup. 
and then you can just go from there and then make tweaks as you would go along. Now when it comes to tweaking your UI, this is something I actually recommend doing quite frequently. I am someone who makes many tweaks to his UI on a daily basis. These generally, now that I'm in a position where I quite like my UI, are quite subtle things. But every now and then you do just realise that there's something not quite the way that you want it. And the big perk of having LVI is that if you see something that's just not quite how you'd like it, you can go into those settings and chances are the setting will be there to tweak it to be more how you like. For example, right before filming for this video, I noticed that my party frames were not set up quite as I would like in terms of the information displayed. Um, I had an overlap between the player names and the player health value and I didn't like it so I orientated the player names to be at the bottom of the squares instead of centralised. Tiny things like that you're going to be wanting to tweak here and there because there are so many things you can't possibly get it all right in the first few minutes of setup. So if you do decide to give this a go and you don't have it exactly perfect, don't panic, play the game, realise what ways you don't like it and adapt from there. Next up we have Threat Meter Classic. Now not much to say about this one but it is a part of my UI so I will mention it. Um, it is the little box that you see sort of somewhat offset to the right from the centre of my screen that says Threat at the top of it. And literally in terms of setup, this has got to be the simplest add-on I've ever installed. I simply downloaded it move the window to where I wanted it to be and adjust the height and width to fit nicely into the gap I had for it. Beyond that, all this add-on actually does is it helps you to track your threat on any given target comparative to say the tank while you are in a dungeon so that you know if you're going to pull aggro so you can lay back a little bit or if you can go ham on that mob. It is quite a helpful add-on but this is one of the other things to bear in mind when you are configuring your own UI is that not everything is going to be useful to everybody so let's say for example you simply do not do dungeons or group play whatsoever then this is absolutely no use to you whatsoever so simply do not feature it as part of your UI or maybe if it's something you just do very casually you may not need it quite as prominent or taking up as much space as I have and it's something that you could relocate elsewhere or adjust the size thereof quite easily so do bear that in mind as well. Right next to our threat meter that we just discussed, we have my details windows. Now I have these set up to have three windows side by side that show different things depending on the character that I am on. But these are in essence just information windows. So most of the time I have these set to damage done, uh, damage taken and also my spells to track what when I'm playing is doing the most damage or healing from my spell roster as it were so that I can keep a track of what things I may want to improve on or maybe if a particular proc is actually ready use to me where it reads quite well or something like that. As to how you configure these windows or if you want this to be a part of your UI again, I should stress that everybody is different in their terms of their needs but this is something that you can vary quite dramatically. So for example, I have three windows. As default, you will only have one. However, the configuration of these windows is quite simple. When you first install the add-on, you will be met with a single window. From there, it has a button on the window that gives you additional windows. You can resize them, place them next to each other, and they'll sort of snap into place and make a group of windows. And then on any given window at any given time, you can very easily just adapt what's shown on it via the centralized button on the top bar of the window. Now the final of our add-ons that is relatively small in terms of its place on the screen is going to be XP to level. Now XP to level is the window that you see in the upper left quadrant of my screen that is displaying the number of kills approximated that I would need to level up, the number of quests completions, dungeon completions, battleground completions, as well as the amount of experience I am on at the time or the amount of time predicted via my current leveling speed to achieve my level. Very simple add-on. Again, just about information to get that information to me as best as it can to help give a sense of where I'm at in my level. This add-on pretty much is exclusively used for motivation while I'm leveling. It does also have a horrible effect in that it can feel like you've been leveling quite well and then you'll see you've still got hours until your next level at its predictions which is exactly the opposite of motivation it is incredibly demoralizing however i do like to have as much information on my screen as possible 
I am very much somebody who likes to have all the information available to them, as much of it on my screen as possible. I do see the value in having a clean UI, but again, when we're talking about personal preferences in our UIs, I like to have my screen very busy. So this is a great addition to help fill up some of the real estate on my screen, but not in a useless way. It does actually provide information that is useful to me. Speaking of useful information, the second to last add-on that we have to discuss is going to be our Titan Bar Classic. Now, Titan Bar Classic is the bar that you see that runs along the entirety of the top of my screen. And again, this is just another information delivery add-on. I do also kind of like the aesthetic that it adds with this sort of border to the top of the screen window. However, the reason I have this is simply for the information that it gives. So mine is configured pretty much as it comes out of the box. I don't recall ever making any changes to this add-on. But what it's going to tell me is location, my amount of gold that I have across the realm, my durability and how much it's going to cost me to repair and how full my bags are. Uh, beyond that, it does offer a few other things. I do like the experience per hour that it offers on the top bar, although I don't find the time to level quite as accurate as I do with XP to level. They don't always agree with each other. But these information are things that are very important and things that I find quite helpful. It can be configured to show other things as well, both out the box, as well as getting sort of extra plugins to get additional information on there. And I've seen all sorts of things on there. I did once find a use for the sort of health regeneration to understand whether I was going to be able to do soloing effectively. So there is a use for all of these little tweaks that you can get. But installing this add-on pretty much straight out of the box is going to get you 99% of the value of the add-on without any configuration whatsoever. Now that cannot be said of our final add-on. So our final add-on that we're going to talk about is weak auras. Now, the reason we've left this till last is because depending on which of my videos you're watching and which character you're going to be seeing, the weak auras display very differently on the screen. So I have many different weak auras for many different characters for many different functions. So if you see something on my UI that is not Blizzard default and is not something I've mentioned already, chances are it's going to be a weak aura. On the rogue footage that we're watching just now, I actually only have two active weak auras when I normally have 10 plus and those are going to be the rogue all-in-one ui that you see centralized on the screen so it's showing me detailed accurate information on my cooldowns their availability my short-term buffs my energy regeneration things like that and up towards the top of the screen you're going to see the information with regards to my poisons the amount of stacks i've got left on them for both mainland and offhand and the length of time the buff has left now obviously this information is incredibly useful to me as well as being very gameplay driven in terms of my capacity to perform in combat. But you can get weak horrors that show you pretty much anything that you would like. You can get it to show character stats, you can get it to help as a tracker for when you're doing your gathering professions, you can use it as timers for when you have a crafting profession on cooldown, things that you can do pretty much anything with weak horrors, which is something that I do a lot. The only problem with weak auras that I find is that they are quite demanding on your computer in real time. So things like loading screens do go up dramatically when you have a lot of weak auras installed. And there's no real way around that apart from not having weak auras that you simply don't need. Which is something that I am very much sinful of myself. Now, when it comes to weak auras and their configuration, it is incredibly difficult to get a grasp of. What I would recommend is... Actually, if you're going to get into weak auras, going and watching some tutorial videos on how to do it. There are quite a few out there and they are very helpful because it is something that can be done quite simply, but it does get quite convoluted if you were to go into the depths of what is capable with weak auras. Personally, I don't make all that many myself. I did have a video a little while back that helped make some on um, tracking my speed buffs for effective farming. But for the most part, when it comes to the weak auras that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, I tend to have the ones that have already been created by members of the community that I get off of a website. Now, that website is WAGO. I would just pop that into Google. Top thing that comes up is going to be the right answer. Go on there and have a browse through all of the categories to find the weak auras that are relevant to yourself. Simply find one that works for you click the copy import string on the website and then go into game 
open up the Wii Chorus menu either by slash WA or by going into your interface menu on your escape menu and then just click import paste in what you copied before from the website job done easy as that so now that I've been over all of the add-ons that I use for my UI the last thing that I really want to mention is sort of why I have everything configured the way that I do I have sort of alluded to this already in that I like to have a very busy UI with lots of information. I never like the idea that there's information out there that can help me that I don't have ready access to because it just seems very inefficient to me. I do like to have a lot of open space still on my UI, but if it came down to a choice of having a overly crowded UI with all the information or one that was quite clean and crisp, then I would definitely have an overly crowded UI. Many people will disagree with this and that is exactly why I've made this video. I want to stress to people that a UI that works for you is what is most important. UI stands for user interface and since the user varies, the interface should as well. My UI, for example, does actually vary even just by the character that I'm on, even though obviously I am still the same person behind the keyboard. You want different information in different prominence levels on your screen depending on the role that you're playing or what activity you're performing so never be afraid to fiddle with your UI. This can be a daunting task and that is exactly why I've made this video so you know where I started from and my logical process that I followed to get to the UI that I have today. It is an ever evolving process, my UI changes daily and I highly recommend that yours does too. Once you get to somewhere where you're happy with it, you are still going to make tweaks, but you will find that you're able to enjoy your game and play to a higher standard while you are still improving your UI consistently. So, I hope you found the video useful, and if you did, please do consider liking the video and or subscribing to the channel so you can be kept up to date with future videos of a similar nature. And I hope to see you in the next one. Later! Thank you.